around my story. Hello everyone, I'm Lauren. Did you ever wonder what it would be like to have your life completely destroyed by someone close to you? Ever thought about what you would do then? I didn't have time to think, because that's exactly what happened to me. It all started two years ago. I lived a quiet life with my mom and dad and my sister. I loved my family. We were always together. We were happy until that fateful day. My dad got fired from his work, a big company. He had worked there for 20 years. The only money we had then was what he had managed to save over the years. Finding a new job wasn't easy. It was a hard time for all of us, especially my dad. He was becoming desperate. At times, he just sat there, quietly, deep in thought, and I rarely saw him smile since. One late night, we were still up waiting for him when he walked through the door. But something was different. He wasn't walking straight. It was the first time in my life seeing him drunk. I decided to take matters in my own hand. I started job hunting. I was lucky enough to find something suitable at a startup company. The pay was good enough. And the more I worked, the more I earned. I was trying my best to get our life back. I was giving it all I've got. My dad started asking me for money. I was more than happy to give him what he needed. I didn't even ask what it was for. Then he started asking for more. He came late almost every night, and he was never awake in the morning. It seemed like we hadn't talked together for ages. Then, money started disappearing from my purse. I got home from work one night. It had been a long day, and I was really tired. I put my bag in my room, and I went to the kitchen to find something to eat. I made myself a sandwich, then took it back to my room. But when I got to the door, I saw a shadow moving inside. I thought everyone was asleep, so I opened the door slightly and looked inside. I couldn't believe what I saw. My dad was standing over my bag, and my wallet was in his hand. He found no money in it, so he threw it on the bed and started going through my purse. At that moment, my mom came down the stairs. She had my dad's shirt in her hands and a small pack of white powder. I looked at her face. Her eyes were filled with tears. I tried to speak, but found nothing to say. My dad came out of my room. He saw us standing there. Suddenly, everything changed. He tore the shirt and the pack from my mom's hands. He was hysterical. He started breaking things around him. My mom and I were too scared to move. But then my sister came running down the stairs. He pulled her towards him and held a knife to her throat. He threatened to kill her if we didn't give him money. Without a moment's thought, I did what he asked. Things only got worse. Nothing was ever enough. He asked for more and more money, and if I refused, he'd get violent, beating up anyone in his path. I couldn't stand by and watch, so I would just give him what he wanted, until I decided enough was enough. He barged down the stairs one evening and asked for all the money I've got. I told him we had expenses to pay, the rent, school fees, but none of it mattered to him. He asked me again for the money and threatened me if I didn't do what he asked. I refused. He hit me so hard that I crashed my head against the wall and fell to the floor, bleeding. Everything went dark. My mom took me to different hospitals, and I had to do a lot of checkups and tests, but all the doctors said the same thing, that this was it. I was sentenced to live my life in darkness, never to see the light again. Bumping my head against the wall was one of the reasons, but apparently my psychological state played a huge role in my recovery. The doctor suggested that I'd be taken to a psychiatrist. My dad felt sorry for what he had done to me. He quit the drugs and alcohol, tried to be proper, but it was because of him that I was in this state. I didn't know if I could ever find it in myself to forgive him. I was torn inside. He was my dad, but I couldn't forget what had happened. I stopped talking shortly after, and he left, disappearing from our lives. No one knew where he was or what he was doing. A year had passed, and he came home. He sounded good, kind of like how he was before. He's trying to make up for what he had done. But to me, nothing he does makes a difference anymore. I'm still in the dark. That's something I'm going to have to live with my whole life. I can't change that. What do you think I should do? I adore detective adventures and solving puzzles that others can't. I'm crazy about this. I love challenges and mysteries. 
I'm Ramon, but my father's nickname for me is Megamind. I'm 14 years old, and I'm typically ranked number one in my class every year. I have become famous for solving riddles. Many comers have tried to unseat me, but all have failed. I love to examine minute details. But let me get on with telling you my story. One hot summer, we had just finished our exams at school and were going on summer break. So I organized a trip to the beach with my friends. Beach weather is amazing. Clear skies, cool ocean breezes, sand, and sun. Just amazing. One day, before my beach trip, my mother handed me a letter from my grandmother. I was surprised and thought it was a little weird because Granny owned a hotel in the surrounding area nearby. It had wonderful views all around it. I had opened the letter, which read, Dear Ramon, How are you? I hope you're enjoying your summer break. Would you mind spending a couple of days with me? I have a serious matter that I would like to discuss with you. Granny. Initially, I thought that it was probably some silly matter, but then my inner voice told me that it might be important. I was conflicted between going on my beach trip or visiting my granny. I decided to visit granny first. She was family after all. So off I went. Though my grandmother lived in a beautiful area, the closer I got to the hotel, the more my inner voice was nagging me. When I arrived at the hotel, Granny was waiting for me. She smiled and hugged me. I had missed her so much. She had company. Raul, her maintenance man, and Malika, her housekeeper and assistant. There weren't any guests in the hotel at the time, and I asked her why. Her face changed, and she said that was what she wanted to speak to me about. So we went to her room to talk. She then proceeded to tell me that the hotel was haunted. Haunted? I exclaimed. What makes you think that? Granny said, The hotel has evil spirits that frighten the guests at night. I didn't want to believe it, but I knew Granny was a rational person. I suspected there was more to this than meets the eye, so I decided to investigate this intriguing mystery. On my first night at the hotel, I waited until midnight. Then I lit a candle and walked through the halls of the hotel. There were photos on the wall and I could hear whispering and the rustle of the leaves outside. It was a little spooky and unsettling and made my blood run cold. Suddenly, I heard laughing on both sides of the hotel and a shadow passed quickly in front of my eyes. Unnerved, I quickly returned to my room where soon afterwards I heard something scratching on my door. I kept thinking to myself, I am not afraid. I am not afraid. Then the door began opening slowly. I saw a hand on the doorknob. Then the owner of the hand came into view. It was a cloaked, headless man holding a candle. I fainted. The next day, I woke up to find Granny and Malika standing beside me. Granny told me that I had been sleeping a long time. I asked what had happened and they told me they heard me scream and came to my aid. When they found me, I was unconscious on the floor. At that moment, there was a knock on the door. It was Raul bringing me a drink. That was when I noticed something strange about Raul's face. It was emotionless. Then I glanced at his hands as I accepted the drink from him. That night, I again walked around the hotel. I found some steps at the end of a corridor that led to the basement. Down in the basement, I opened a maintenance door and found a tape recorder and a pile of clothes on a table. Suddenly the lights went out. I was groping around in the dark and trying to find my way back when I heard the laughing again. Still, I continued stumbling ahead through the dark. I stepped on an electrical line and tore it off the wall. I returned to my room. My door opened slowly. I was hiding behind the door. I grabbed the loose electrical detonator and touched it to the doorknob. It was live, and I heard a grunt from the owner of the hand on the other side of the door as he or she was shocked, and I heard him or her fall to the floor. It took me a while to find the electrical panel, but I managed to get the lights back on. When I did, I found Raul laying unconscious on the floor next to the doorknob that I had electrified. I called Granny and Malika down to the basement. Granny asked what had happened. I replied, Granny, you really need to screen your employees better. 
Raoul was your ghost. Granny looked shocked and asked me what made me think that. I explained that the hand on my drink today was the same hand I saw on the headless ghost that opened my hotel room door the night before. I also found tools, a tape recorder, and some ghost clothes down here in the basement. In addition, I found the earphones that had been placed around the hotel. Granny was shocked. Raul woke up about that time, and she grilled Raul. Why are you scaring all my guests away, Raul? He said, This hotel used to belong to my family, but you bought it from my grandfather. Well, I wanted it back. Please forgive me. Malika said, We have to call the police. But I said, No, wait. I have an idea. Let's renovate and reopen the hotel with a new name. The Haunted Hotel. Our advertising slogan will be, Spend a night in a haunted hotel. Raul can do his ghost thing with the whispers and the laughing. Why, he can even flicker the lights off and on at a random time once or twice a night just to give the hotel a spooky atmosphere. The idea proved to be a big hit. The haunted hotel attracted many